Sean Parcells had his first court appearance today. He's charged with theft and desecration of bodies, which means for the first time, some of those families got to confront Parcells face to face, and we were there for all of it. Tonight, we take you inside his back alley autopsy lab that's now under investigation. Here's investigative reporter Angie Riccono. And, he, and he, he's in that mindset where he thinks he can't be touched. Tammy Spillman hired Sean Parcells to perform an autopsy on her dad. We kind of depended on that second autopsy to, to help um, maybe give us some type of closure. Closure never came. Spillman describes a mess. The man she hired, Sean Parcells, ducked her phone calls and ignored her text messages. It's been six months and there's still no final report. He's a POS. Piece of <laughs> so uh, that's, that's just it. That's, that's my nickname for him. He's a POS. Today, Spillman made the long drive to Waubonsee County to see Parcells stand before a judge. I was, I was sick to my stomach. So I did everything I could to keep my mouth shut. So I'm glad my mom raised me as a lady. The Kansas Attorney General says there was no supervising doctor in multiple county cases. Spillman fears the same in her father's case. Who supervised her father's autopsy? I was there and did the gross portion of Who's the, the pathologist? It was, uh, it was Dr. Um, Duggal. But he says he's never he's, supervised you. He's never. Well, and that's a, that's a term of art, supervision. What correct. does that mean? What, what is is, what is the definition of is? What is supervision? Are you serious? I am serious. What you just heard is why Parcells faces charges. Kansas law requires supervision. Parcells and his attorney believe that's possibly a long distance relationship. Dig a bit further and even that doesn't seem to be the case. He gave me your name as somebody he is currently working with and that you are his supervisor. You are his supervisor. Okay, uh, no, I am not. Uh, and he never got any case to me. He has not uh, uh, given me any case. As I have not got a penny from him. Probably he has just used my name and the license number for the lab toxicology results. For now, Parcell's so-called autopsy reports are on hold. He's been slapped with a restraining order at the request of the Kansas Attorney General. All of the samples are at my facility, safe and secure, labeled, and properly stored. Step inside. We did about two months ago. Parcells gave us a tour. He's proud of this back alley autopsy lab. So this is our, the autopsy suite. Okay. And um, obviously bathroom. There's carpet on the floor, what appears to be a lack of organization, and this is how containers are labeled and stored. All of our tissues that come in that need to be processed, some of these are just empty boxes uh, that, for example, like this one, is a is a case that we did for Indiana University, a brain case. Tissues that we have, all these tissues that we have in the facility are correctly labeled. Um, some of these cases are homicides. Legally, we have to keep those forever. I don't know where, okay, she's over there, so just be ready. We agreed to not record a woman's body that was unwrapped and unrefrigerated in the back corner. The freezers. And it couldn't be because there's no walk-in refrigerator inside this makeshift morgue. Only two small freezers that could be purchased at any big box store. Um, some of them are tissues, like this is a case we did for Stanford, where I was telling you it was basically a full autopsy. Um, this is our central location, our main morgue, where all the tissues from all the cases come here and are stored. Do you trust anything he could give you? No, I don't know nothing, nothing at all. Because with what? everything that I've read, everything that's come up about him, I'm afraid to be doctored. Tammy Spillman no longer wants what she considers to be a botched autopsy report. What she wants now is justice. I'm more than like, I'm afraid he's gonna get slapped on his wrist. You know, I think he needs to be held accountable for each family member that he's victimized. Right now, the only cases being prosecuted involve Parcells County work when he was paid with tax dollars. And the families are frustrated he doesn't face any charges in their private cases. And they feel like what they are going through is just as bad, if not worse. Thursday night at 10, the case that breaks our hearts the most. This is Nassim.
He died when he was two days old. His mother is still waiting for an autopsy report. It's been more than a year. Angie Bercono, KCTV5 News.